All right, this is the beginning of a series of videos that um, I'm going to make regarding the HSC key terms and a few other things as well. Um, the key terms for the HSC came, come from uh, NESA and there is actually a, a link uh, I'll put in the comments, um, or sorry, in the description about uh, where these key terms come from and you're welcome to have a look at the documentation to that. Uh, so without further ado, I'll do a bit of explanation about it. So in the HSC key terms, um, what we're doing is that we need to address the key terms, um, the plural and the context, and it's really important that we do. Um, it can be the difference between, say, a band four response and a band six, uh, if candidates can actually follow these instructions. Now, um, learning these three things that I'm going to talk about today, uh, if you can put these together with knowing the content of your subject, um, then you're well on the way to getting a really great, uh, decent HSC result. Um, you can apply this knowledge in each of your subjects. Um, there are subtle differences, so please make sure that you are checking with your teachers um, about the key terms or the key verbs that are used. Um, and of course, I am an information processes and technologies teacher. So I've had a lot of experience with the verbs being used in my subject, uh, as well as software design and development. There are some subtle differences with, of course, other subjects, uh, including English and art. Um, and um, uh, hopefully your teachers will, well, you know, it's guaranteed that your teachers will discuss that with you uh, when it comes time to preparing for that. Uh, you, it'd be great if you could actually not only study the content that you're learning of your subject, um, but also um, learn how the content is examined by using these um, using these three key terms, uh, key points. So let's get on and look at the key terms. And of course, it's important that you understand them because it, it's, it's basically understanding what the difference between not knowing what a question is asking you to actually knowing what is being asked of you and how to answer it. Uh, and of course, marks are allocated on you addressing the whether or not you've addressed the verb or the key term. And um, having ha marked HSC for quite some time now, uh, the first thing we do is look at did the student address the key term. So in this example that I'm showing you in this presentation, the, the verb used is describe. And you can see here that the question says, describe the benefits of creating a prototype for this system. Um, now, we don't have to go into specifics at this moment about what a prototype is or uh, what a system is or anything like that. But the verb is to describe. And so um, what we'll do later on down the track is um, I will create a video that explains um, what describe, how, how to actually describe something. And, and some students, um, when I do ask them the question, I say, what, what does describe mean? And the first thing they'll say is, oh, well, you explain something. And, and in actual fact, um, I could actually say that the question says, explain the benefits of creating prototype. I, it w I would be explaining it. But describe is a little bit different. And, and I'll get into more detail about that uh, in later on down the track in, in these videos. But at the moment, we need to recognise where the verb is, and usually it's at the start. And this one, for example, you can see it is described, and I've highlighted it in yellow. And then you can see this here is the key verb that we're looking at. So we're looking at the term describe. Now, the NESA documentation talks about the key terms, and it will have a listing of describe, and it will explain what you do or what a describe means. The next part of this is the context. Now, uh, quite often you will be given a scenario about a type a question, and in this case that I'm talking about, um, it's a it was a question in the uh, 2018 IPT HSC uh, question 24, which was talking about a, um, a bushfire protection system. So, when when you're given a scenario, the context in this regard is. Uh, the bushfire protection system. And what that means is this, that we talk about addressing the context um, or looking at the situation the question is, is talking about. And addressing it, 
you can actually get marks because you have mentioned the context. So in this case, in this question that I'm talking about, if you mention the bushfire protection system, then of course you're well on the way to um, marking it. Now, where do you recognise that? Well, this qu the question um, that I'm talking about uh, mentioned is the bushfire protection system. Now, let's have a look at that same question. And you can see that the verb is to describe the benefits of creating a prototype for this system. So in your answer, you would have to describe and use the bushfire protection system wording in your answer because you're addressing the system. And, the, and uh, in the next part of it, I will show uh, what it looks like for the marking guide and how the marking guide works. So here we have, of course, the verb, and then of course we have the context, which the, in this case, uh, the candidate is actually asking, uh, being asked, um, how, do you, how do you sort of respond in regards to the bushfire protection system? It's not, it doesn't always happen, but you've always got to be look, on the lookout for when it does ask for the context. And this is the example of the context. The next part of this is, of course, the plural. I call it the plural, and, and others may call it something different, totally different, but um, hopefully uh, the, they're explaining the exact same thing as I am. And, and this is what it is. You know, the plural, you know, and we all know plural is usually at the end of a word, and it means more than one. So, for example, here you address, I've uh, got an error there, number of times, so there's multiple times, a question requires an answer. So you've got to address the plural, right? And marks are allocated about the amount of times that verb is being addressed, depending on the question. So in this, the plural is asking for more than one benefit in this example. Same question, let's have a look at it again. So it says, the verb is to describe. Now we have the plural, the benefits, more than one benefit of creating a prototype for this system. So students can actually see, and I'll just press this button, and you can see that this is the verb, this is the plural, and this is the context that's actually happening in this, in this question. And if you can address all three of those, then of course what happens is you are in favour of answering this question correctly because you have pulled apart the question and you know how to answer this question and address it. Now let's have a look at the mark allocation for this question. So the question here is describe the benefits of creating a prototype for this system. Now the markers, the HSC markers get this as an example, the criteria of the marks. So three marks for describing the benefits, in plural, for creating a prototype for this system. Now I'm not going to give you an example of an answer, but we would talk about uh, in the bushfire protection system, creating a prototype is important because, so we're talking about the how and the why and the beat you know, the because reasons of why. If you only do one benefit, you get two marks, or if you only outline the benefits of using a prototype. So you don't talk about the how and why, you just say, well, you know, it's important to create a prototype, and you don't say because, then of course you only get two marks. But if you only identify, so if you only basically list a feature of a prototype, then you are only getting one mark. You don't even have to mention the context, which is the system. Now, if we have a look at this, these are all the verbs, and I've color-coded them in difficulty. And, and when I talk about difficulty, most of the time they're color-coded based on marks as well. So here we have the real simple ones, the identify ones. So you can see there's list, identify, define, pretty much regurgitate information straight away. And we have the describing ones. So we're getting up around the two to three marks. And then as we progressively move along, you can see that these words or these verbs can be quite difficult. Critically analyse, and what does that look like? Interpolate, propose, even predict. These are large, uh, you know, we're talking about you know, anywhere between six to 10 marks. If something asks you, say, evaluate the effectiveness of a prototype for this system, you would, you would definitely be getting it around the six to 10 mark. So you can see if we go back and look at that question, if that said uh, critically analyse the benefits of creating a prototype for this system, it certainly wouldn't be worth three marks. It would be worth a lot more. So in the next coming, in the next series of videos, I'm going to create a video that addresses each of these verbs and what they look like in IPT. Now, they may be a little bit different 
in each of your subjects. So it's worth checking with your teachers what the verbs actually mean in your subject. Um, you might even have, for example, just these ones across the top. Um, and um, I will mention here, there is a system called an alarm system, which is um, a system that is used in different subjects. And you may have already been taught the alarm system. Now, what I've tried to do is sort of marry up the, the verbs based on what the NESA documentation says to their level of difficulty and their possible mark allocation and also um, and also based on what alarm is as well. But do not take that as face value as this is the alarm and this is how you do it. It's certainly not that technique. And just making the point of these are the levels that Nessa has said that these verbs are in difficulty. So as you can see, the purple ones are the most difficult. So I hope that helps.